Born on a Blue Day, written by Daniel Tamlin. Born on a Blue Day Inside the Mind of an Autistic Savant is written by and a memoir about Daniel Tamlin. It was published by Free Press in 2006 in Great Britain. The book is shown here on the slide. Identifying as an autistic savant, Daniel was born in East London on a Wednesday. Daniel is a person who is on the autism spectrum and is high functioning. He identifies as a person with Asperger's who is a savant. A savant is someone who has a developmental disability that has extremely remarkable abilities or talents. This is a quote from page one that exemplifies his abilities. I was born on January 31st, 1979, a Wednesday. I know it was a Wednesday because the date is blue in my mind, and Wednesdays are always blue, like the number nine, or the sound of loud voices arguing. Daniel has synesthesia, which allows his brain to see color and movement with numbers. This gives him remarkable abilities to memorize numbers and perform mathematical calculations in his head. Savant syndrome and synesthesia are very rare and incredible, but it is important to remember to not categorize all people with autism as having special abilities, which Daniel brings light to in his book. I think it is important to have background information on Daniel and his um, autism and his intellectual abilities because it, it allows the reader to better understand the stories that are told in the book. Daniel has some very unique abilities that most people do not have a background or understanding in. Themes. The first major theme in his memoir is the exploration of differences and acceptance of them. Growing up, Daniel knew he was different than other children and saw the world in a different way. It wasn't until he was older when he realized he had differences, but was trying his best to embrace them and use them to navigate the world. Daniel makes it very clear that having savant syndrome and being on the autism spectrum is something he now accepts and ex helps him with his daily life. Next is being true to yourself. Throughout the book, Daniel shared with us his real emotions, thoughts, and memories. He did not sugarcoat any of his struggles growing up and living as a person who is on the autism spectrum. This is important for us as readers because it shows that no matter who you are or what you're struggling with, it is important to stick to your values and be yourself. Finally, Daniel shows the theme and importance of friendships and relationships. Although Daniel has a very hard time connecting with people and feeling comfortable, the friends he did make help him get through hard times, along with his relationship with his parents. The picture on this page is a visual representation painting done by Daniel himself. It shows how his brain can do multiplication based on synesthesia. This is 53 times 131. The shape in the middle is how he views the product with the color and the shape to do these multiplication problems. A little summary on his childhood. Growing up, Daniel did not have an easy time attending school. He didn't have very many friends as he liked to spend his time alone. At the time, which was in the 80s, there was not a solid medical understanding of autism, especially the higher functioning side. Daniel felt very confused about who he was and he was not able to get an understanding of himself or why he felt different. His parents also didn't want to label him as being different because there was a stigma around that. When Daniel was four years old, he had a major epileptic seizure. He was lucky his dad was able to take him to the emergency room, but it did bring light to the fact that people on the autism spectrum are much higher to experience epilepsy. A struggle that persisted all throughout his adolescence was the idea of relationships. Daniel liked to spend a lot of time by himself because it provided him comfort and he always knew what was going to happen. It was hard for him to reach out to others. Although he didn't find comfort in people, he did find comfort in numbers. Because of his synesthesia, he is able, able to create beautiful, colorful landscapes in his head when doing math equations and problems. He has a love for prime numbers because of the way he sees them in his head. Prime numbers are not divisible by any other whole numbers, so they are special. I think that math help him, helped him get through the times when he was unsure why he was feeling the way he did and felt like he couldn't relate to anyone. Into his adult life, he completed primary school and decided to pursue a service learning or service trip to Lithuania. This was a huge step for him because he wasn't able to respond well to new situations. His job in Lithuania was to teach English to Lithuanians. He found a few of his very good friends on this trip. He even learned the Lithuanian language from one of his friends there. Daniel's very talented at learning new languages. He can learn them extremely quickly and has a knack for learning the accent. Daniel's synesthesia helps him in this process. Certain words and sentences provide his brain images and feelings that help him to remember what each means. Overall, his trip was very rewarding. Soon after he returned to London, he met his future partner, Neil. Daniel knew from a very young age that he was romantically attracted to men, and this further caused him to feel different. Although Neil made him feel complete, Neil helped Daniel start his own website, which turned into his career. Daniel created a website to help other people learn new languages.
To raise money for the National Society for Epilepsy, Daniel decided to memorize Pi and recite it publicly. Pi is very excited to him because his brain creates intense, colorful landscapes when he thinks about the numbers. Daniel ended up reciting 22,514 digits of Pi correctly in 5 hours and 9 minutes. This was a new world record. I included a drawing done by Daniel that shows um, the landscape in his head when he thinks of Pi. After his fame with the Pi World Record, he was contacted by a major TV company to make a documentary on him. He agreed and traveled with the TV program to the United States, which was a very new and surreal experience. Ability versus Disability The term disability has a negative connotation to myself and many others who think about it. Comparing someone who has abilities versus someone who supposedly doesn't have them based on the name used to categorize them doesn't seem fair to me. People with disabilities are full of ability and can succeed in life when given the proper opportunities and guidance. In the book, Daniel grew up not knowing why he was different or what was wrong with him, but it is clear that Daniel has some pretty special abilities and is capable of overcoming most of his obstacles. I think Daniel is a special and rare person who has savant syndrome and synesthesia along with his autism, but I think that people who don't have these traits are just as special and worthy as he is. This goes along with the idea of inclusion in the classroom and in life. In the classroom, it is important for children to get the same opportunities no matter if they have a label of disability or not. There are so many strengths people with disabilities have that would help them excel in an inclusive environment. Daniel wrote, when I was a child, doctors did not know about Asperger's syndrome, and so for many years I grew up with no understanding of why I felt so different from my peers and apart from the world around me. By writing about my experiences of growing up on the autism spectrum, it is my hope that I can help other young people living with high-functioning autism to feel less isolated and to have confidence in the knowledge that is ultimately possible to lead a happy and productive life. Daniel's optimism is powerful and hopefully brings confidence to those who are reading this and feeling unsure of their abilities and place in the world. This book has strengthened my opinion that people should be given the chance to be viewed as only their abilities and not limited to their disability label. Diversity. As we read about in chapter 3 in our textbook, there is a lack of diversity in the education setting. Many of the teachers identify as white and as a female. This is a concern to me because there's a wide range of cultures and languages that are seen in the classroom. In order to properly educate children, we need to know and understand each part of their background. It is stated in the book that schools in the U.S. are grounded in white, middle-class values. This poses a problem because many, many students do not share the same values and ideals as their teachers. I believe it is important to address the consequences this may have on students who identify with different racial and ethnic backgrounds. There's a lot of lack of trust and proper communication if these aren't taken seriously. When educating people with disabilities who also identify with a different race or ethnicity, it is important to take into consideration their home life, values, and much more in order to be the best educator for them. Realizing and understanding different values that people share could help create a more welcome learning environment and allow students to properly engage in the materials. In the book, when Daniel goes on his service trip, he is in charge of teaching language, English, in a classroom. He does a great job of getting to know the country and the ways of life to better identify with them. Normalcy. Throughout Daniel's childhood, he was always comparing himself to other children and wondering why he was different. I believe that this was very hard on Daniel because he thought it was bad that he wasn't like the other kids. I think this ties into my view on normalcy, the term normal is created by society as to what they believe to be correct and customary. This brings me to the question of what is normal. When referring to normal people versus people with disabilities, I don't think it should ever be happening. There shouldn't be a categorization of people who others don't believe are normal. There's a difference between normal and unique. Comparing Daniel, who has a developmental disability, to someone who doesn't have this is not saying one of them is more normal than the other. Every person is unique in their own way. People should be treated no matter what. Near the end of the memoir, as Daniel got into later adolescence, he realized that he is unique in a good way. Although he doesn't feel the same as others, he is growing more and learning to accept himself. Daniel is no less normal than anyone else and should be treated as equally. The image on the right is an artist's view and take on synesthesia. Difference. There's a strong connection between how I interpret difference and normalcy. Society has created norms about who they believe is normal and who others should be compared to. If a person doesn't fit into the mold, they are different. Although people are different from each other, it doesn't have to be a negative thing. Being different is good and allows people to be their true selves. This relates to disabilities because many people who have a disability feel different and are perceived as different from society. I think that it is important to accept that people have differences, but it needs to be looked at in a positive light. 
For example, Daniel's extraordinary talents allowed him to break a world record and raise money for charity. People see this as something that is good and they accept that. I believe we need to accept and change our views so that we look at all people who are different, whether they have a disability or not, and see the goodness in their differences. Overall, Daniel Tammet was very honest and real in his memoir. He shared raw, true emotions and his real-life experiences. His hope is to help others who read this book and show them they can be successful no matter how different they feel. This book shed a positive light on love, life, and friendships.